So let's begin our discussion of ice processes by talking about glaciers and where glaciers are found. And there are two kinds of glaciers. Uh, there is going to be glaciers that are found in mountains, and then there's going to be glaciers that are found on continents. And so this picture here is going to be showing those mountainous glaciers. And you can see that there is a, a large number of glaciers located uh, in uh, uh, the Himalayas, and then you also notice there's a lot of glaciers located in uh, South America, in the Andes, and then in North America, in the Rockies, and then in Europe, in the Alps. So today, glaciers cover 10% of the Earth, but during the Ice Ages, they covered 30% of the Earth's surface. So uh, how does a glacier form? So it's going to form uh, as a result of the compaction of snow. So snow, when it first falls, is mostly air. Because if you were to take one foot of freshly fallen snow and then you melt it, it's going to turn into about one inch of water. So that snow is mostly air. So let's say that in a particular area it snows, okay, and then it snows on top of that snow. Well, the weight of this snow up here is going to start to put pressure on this snow that's down here, and it's going to start to compact it. Notice that this is very similar to when we talked about the formation of coal. Uh, with coal, you had a tree that would die in a, in a swamp, and then another tree would die on, and would lay on top of it, and another tree would die, and then the weight of all of that material would start to compress that organic material and turn it into coal. Well, this time it's going to be the weight of all this snow is going to start to compress the snow that's on the bottom and is going to crystallize it into ice. And eventually those ice crystals will interlock with each other. Also notice that this is very similar to when we talked about metamorphic rocks. And we said that if you had a certain metamorphic rock and you squeezed it enough, what could happen is that the minerals would reorient themselves so that they would take up less space. And so very similarly, this uh, ice will be more compact at the bottom of the glacier. Okay, what are some different types of glaciers? So we've already mentioned glaciers that are found in the mountains, but then you can also have glaciers that cover an entire continent. So an example of this uh, would be Antarctica, and then another example might be Greenland, where you have uh, a, an entire continent that is covered over by uh, a glacier. Okay, why do glaciers advance and why do they retreat? So let's draw a picture here of a mountain. Okay, and then let's say that it is snowing up here. So that's going to be, this area up here is going to be the zone of accumulation. It is going to be accumulating snow up here. And so the more snow you have, the more it's going to be compacted and you start to form a glacier up here. Okay, then because of gravity, it's going to start to be pulled down the slope. Okay, and, as it's, and so as this piece goes down to here, so now let's say that it's down to here, it's still snowing up here and it's forming new glaciers up here and now this is the old glacier down here. So we say that the glacier is advancing and so it's going to advance as long as it is accumulating more snow up here faster than it's getting rid of the ice down here. So down here, this is going to be called the zone of ablation. And so it could be that the ice is melting. It's turning into a liquid. It could be that the ice is evaporating. And so an example of this is it in your freezer of your, um, of your refrigerator. You could take ice, put it in the freezer compartment, and leave it there for a couple of weeks. 
And then if you look at that ice, you would notice it's a little bit smaller. So it's changing directly from a solid to a gas. So that's one way that a glacier can evaporate, uh, uh, get smaller. Glaciers can also melt. Uh, glaciers can also calve. And so that means that, uh, let's say now that the glacier is down to here, and then this part breaks off. So this part of the glacier actually breaks off and we call that calving when that happens. So if the rate at which the, the glacier is disappearing is going to be faster than the rate at which it's forming up here, it's going to retreat. Now that does not mean that the glacier is actually moving backwards. So it's not going back up the hill against gravity. It just means that the glacier is disappearing. So that if this part of the glacier down here disappears, it either, either melts or evaporates or calves, now here's the front of the glacier and notice the front has retreated. It has moved further up. On the other hand, if it snows more up here, then uh, this part is going to slide down to here, this part's going to slide down to here, and so now the glacier is bigger and it has advanced downhill when that happens. Okay, uh, the next thing we want to talk about in our next segment is going to be how do glaciers move.